Is the order of the show somewhere that I was supposed to look at it and I didn't? It was posted in the message, I think. The, I'm sorry. If, if you scroll, scroll up in the Facebook message, there's a, a list. Yeah. All right, thanks. <clears throat>
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Shenanigans Comedy Theater Presents Clash of the Comics, our live online comedy competition. Really appreciate you guys tuning in, being with us tonight. This is a competition, so like I said, um, you know, you being here is a big deal. You're a big part of what's going on, so thank you so much. We would like to also say that this show is a rated R show, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen there. So please make sure that if you are not able to handle it, that you go ahead and go somewhere else if you're not mature enough to handle the mature content. Content may include crude language, adult themes, and drug references. It's intended for mature audiences only. And please note that the views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not reflect or represent those of Shenanigans Comedy Theater. Just a quick little bit about Shenanigans Comedy Theater. We are a 501c3 nonprofit comedy theater in Huntsville, Alabama. And as you can imagine, we have been hit really hard by the coronavirus since we rely on audiences for our income. No audience means we haven't had any income. So if you have a couple of bucks that you don't mind throwing our way, we sure would appreciate it. We're going on good faith and giving away 25 bucks each night that we do this to the comic that wins. And we plan on having a finale show to give away 100 bucks. So your money will help support that, paying the comics as well as helping shenanigans to keep our doors open because we're going to make sure that we're here whenever all this stuff is over. Like I said, you will get the opportunity to be judgmental AF because your vote will determine the winner tonight. So, all of that being said, I want you to uh, please, if you don't mind, be a little patient. This is the first time that we've done this. I'm certain that there are going to be some glitches and technical difficulties, but we're going to do our best to keep it going. Like right now, before I can switch to the next thing, I'm waiting on this spinning little ball of death on my computer to stop spinning and let me go to the next thing. And it did. Well, and now it didn't. So you know how it goes. Hope everyone's doing well out there tonight. Yay. It's still spinning. So there's that. Of course, you know, everything always works perfectly whenever you're practicing it. But anyway, hey guys, my name is Kimberly Wilson. I'm the one whose voice you've been hearing and the one who's going to try to, to get this thing going. Also, you will see a few uh, short videos throughout our presentation here tonight. Those are featuring our house improv troupe, Don't Fear the Weasel. And they're there for some comedic um, enjoyment as well as trying to break up the monotony of me trying to figure all this out all right so there's that i do need to check our first contestant um had gotten kicked off of our skype call a few minutes ago so i need to see if she's back hey she is back there she is so it won't be her when i first switch over but if you guys will give me a second i promise i'll pull her up the way that this is going to work, I'm going to pull her up while I'm explaining this. That's not her. That is not Vanessa, everybody. So just hang loose and I will get you Vanessa, I promise. There she is. Let me take him away. That's Jordan. You'll see him later. Vanessa, can you go horizontal or do you need to stay vertical with your phone? There she goes. All right. So... Whenever I give the comedians the go-ahead, they're going to do five minutes of stand-up for you. They're going to get a light from me at four and a half with just a little bit of wiggle room at five minutes. And then after that, if I have to, I'll switch them off, but hopefully they won't run the light. And you guys kind of take some mental notes, and we're going to go ahead and go. Vanessa, since you're the first one before we start, do you have any questions? Need anything clarified? Okay, I'm unable to hear you, Vanessa. You're glitching in and out a little bit there. I muted myself. I think oh, you can hear me there now. we go. Yes, I can. Okay, fantastic. I, I, I did that to myself. I'm, I apologize. 
<laughs> That's all right. That's all right. So back to what I was asking. Did you have any questions or need any help with anything before we start? That was what I was replying to. I, I, I'm good. But, and thank you so much for having me on as well. This is not, like, it seems like a lot to do. And, like, it, you're doing it pretty ably, if I must say. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I'm just trying to hang in there for my first time. For those of you that are going to be regular tuner inners, just know that it'll get better. All right, Vanessa, I'm going to welcome you to the stage from Ithaca, New York. Here we go. And is it Okoya? Is that how you say your last name? Okoya. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's close enough, yeah. <laughs> all right all right Vanessa your time starts now cool thank you so much for having me everyone this is a very very interesting time um, ordinarily you know people go out into the woods for contemplation and developing new philosophical ideas you know like Henry David Thoreau right he went into the woods um, in his famous treatise Walden I did go to college um, in his treatise Walden he went into the woods to live more deliberately right uh, but now every third Deborah on my Insta feed is going into the woods to uh-huh. chug peppermint schnapps away from her Baptist parents. So <laughs> you know, it's an interesting time that we live in. I think, um, yeah, I, I think it really is. Um, but one thing that I can never get away from is the fact that I am in law school. And um, because why restrain the, the masochism to the comfort of a 7-Eleven bathroom? Um, so I'm in law school right now, and one thing that I've learned is that it is unconstitutional, you know, unconstitutional for you to be black and an idiot at the same time. Um, unconstitutional. It's written in there by Booker T. Washington himself, 28th Amendment, thou shalt not look, make me look like a goddamn fool in front of these white people. Like, that's, <laughs> that's in there, man. So, like, a day that I just forget to read or I just want to skip, skip class, you know, that's the day that I am constitutionally obligated to pull a reverse uh, Dolezal, uh, you know, uh, wear khakis, listen to Jack Johnson. Yeah, you know, only the A students get to wear Kente cloth. <laughs> um, really interesting time there. Um, another thing about me, there's so many interesting things about me. I can only pick like three, um, but one interesting thing about me is that I am six foot three. Uh, oh, wow. Which is to say that the only thing I can usually hear is the sound of my own uh, blood cells panting as they're delivering oxygen <laughs> all over my body. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're working time and a half now. But um, as with most essential laborers right now, um, they're not getting time and a half. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Very interesting thing, being a tall woman. Um, I, I tend to leave just trails of petrified, dead old ladies in my wake. Uh, <laughs> is I wear dark clothing, and I tend to pop unannounced out of bathroom stalls and around blind corners. Right. So, like, I'll uh, just uh, be coming out of a bathroom stall, and a lady will be like, Oh my gosh, a skyscraper woman, and, like, pass out on the ground. <laughs> you know, her heart couldn't take it. You know? So... I do what I'm supposed to do, you know, say the last rites, our Father who art in heaven, hail Krishna, destroyer of worlds, whatever they need. <laughs> and um, I take their wallets. Uh, because <laughs> I'm a living student with student loan debt, and um, I'll be damned if I have to sell feet pics on the internet, you know, when there's just a readily available dead lady's wallet right there. Also, I've done my good. I've ushered their souls into Valhalla. <laughs> What more would she need from me? You know, um, yeah, I am. I'm uh, going through all that. Uh, I also recently uh, stopped using the, the the dating apps like Bumble and all that. It's just, it's just, it, it was too. Okay, it's not that it was too much. I was just not getting any matches whatsoever. Um, that was that was a problem. Uh, when I say that, like, my Tinder feed was, like, like empty and, like, just dead, bereft of life, like, it was like Ted Cruz's funeral, just, like, nobody there, <laughs> no wanting to be there. It was just empty, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and by the way, when I say it was like Ted Cruz's funeral, I'm not saying that I want Ted Cruz to die, I'm saying that <laughs> death comes for us all, and when he dies, I will die twice. So, um, yeah, uh, my matches were just not there, you know. Um, but then I added a picture of myself with the renowned and esteemed 
John Mulaney who visited my campus and mm-hmm. uh, shit was popping off. Like I'd get a match and be like, oh, what does John Mulaney smell like? Are you going <laughs> to perform? Whether can he come to my college graduation party? And he smells like a father. We don't perform together. And he probably paid, like, he's probably paid $36,000 an hour. So I doubt you can take out a loan to cover it. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it was weird. But, you know, it's, it's interesting that they, that, that started popping off when it did. Just in time, actually. Because Bumble uh, started a new campaign right around the time that I posted that pic. Um, and it said, for every... <laughs> For every match that you make, we will donate one meal to a child in need. I mean, first of all, Bumble, sort out my thirst, then we'll talk about your hunger, right? Um, But also, like, I can't control everything that happens on the apps, right? What if I get ghosted? I get unmatched? Someone just straight up says you look like a horrible person. I hate you. Like, what happens to that meal, you know? There's like a... um, That's your time, Vanessa. Everybody give it up for Vanessa. (laughs) Thank you so much, Vanessa. Oh, man, that was fantastic. That's one of the things I love about this and and putting it together. I get to hear it all, but I hope you guys will get the same enjoyment out of it because it's just amazing to me that I get to hear all these comics I wouldn't normally get to hear. So that's awesome. We do. We had one contestant who scratched from the contest shortly before we came on uh, because something was popping off at her work and she had to go in. And this next person who is supposed to come on, I can't get a hold of. So apparently we're only going to have contests with six people tonight. But that's all right. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep it going and go to our next contestant who is going to be Mr. Harvey Starter. Let me pull him up. Let's see. I believe that's right. After Kevin. Yep. Harvey. There's Harvey. Harvey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Awesome. All right, Harvey. You have any questions before your portion starts? Uh, no, no. Not even the first time I've done this kind of stuff today, so... Well, there you go. He's a veteran. Maybe you can teach me some things. All right, Harvey, your five minutes starts now, sir. Okay, first, let's get one thing out of the way. I know what you're all thinking. Wow, that dude from Breaking Bad really let himself go. Yep. <laughs> I'm coming to you from uh, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, which is currently shut down. We apparently the strip finally matches the hopes and dreams of everyone who comes here. <laughs> they see the bright lights and then it's just death. It's like I don't even know why they had to shut down the strip. I mean, have you ever been to Las Vegas? Look, at the best of times, the strip is a petri dish of STDs and bad decisions. <laughs> Corona would have been the least of your concerns, all right? I used the bathroom at the MGM once, and I'm pretty sure I got a venereal disease that only is normally found in aardvarks. So, <laughs> cannot wait for the strip for summer, though, for once. They said the coronavirus, you know, can't survive in high heats, which is good because, you know, I live in a desert and I'm always baked. So, I think I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be fine. I'll be baked out of my mind, but I will be fine. <laughs> Like, I, though this is kind of crazy how pretty much shut down, especially because, you know, in times of crisis, you know, a lot of people in a, in, your, in a country would look to their leaders for intelligence and good decision making. But we live in America, so that's not happening. <laughs> it's, it's a bit disturbing to think that the person who's supposed to stand between us and a deadly virus is a man who looks like if syphilis was a person. <laughs> <laughs> I love, of course, he puts Mike Pence in charge of the virus, in charge of the CDC or virus, whatever the hell it was. Yeah, that's what we need. Someone to kind of combat the virus is someone who believes that you can just pray the gay away. I mean, all that's bullshit. Because if we, because think about it, if prayer, if prayer could change someone's sexual orientation and feelings, we'd all in church be in church every Sunday, be like, dear God, can you please make Margot Robbie attracted to? Fat, bald comedians in the late 30s. Thank you. Uh, so, fun fact about me. I suffer from mental illness. 
I know that doesn't sound like a fun fact, but I'm pretty sure I funded my therapist trip to Barbados last year. So at least someone's having fun with my misery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you name it. I've got it. I got OCD, ADD, Asperger's, Tourette's, depression. Yeah, apparently my DNA decided to treat mental problems as they were goddamn Pokemon, had to catch them all. <laughs> but it's honestly easier to tell you what I don't have, which these days is usually just money or sobriety. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and people people think the living illness is hard, and, and there are some problems. True, there are some problems with mental illness, but there's a lot of upsides to having mental problems that no one talks about. See, I've learned... That when people think you're batshit crazy, no one ever expects you to do a damn thing. It is fantastic. <laughs> I never have to drive my friends to the airport because they think I'm going to drive the car off an overpass. I never have to house sit when they're on vacation because they're worried I'm going to burn the place to the ground where they're gone. <laughs> Having people think you're just one bad day from ending up in a psych ward is just a nonstop buffet of low expectations. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So uh, I am happy, though. Uh, I am still kind of working. I manage inventory in a plumbing warehouse, so I'm technically essential. It's great because I know nothing about plumbing whatsoever. I may have lied just a little bit to get that job. Mm -hmm. I told them I had over 30 years of plumbing experience. I probably should have been clearer. I've played a lot of Mario Brothers. And <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's like, I'm just happy they didn't ask for a drug test. So, so, uh, that's the one nice thing, that a dispensary is still open here in Vegas, which is nice. It always bothered me when people used to talk crap about the dispensaries here because it was like, oh, it's too expensive. You have to wait in line, blah, blah, blah. I was like, bitch, do you remember what it was like in what I like to call the before time? You couldn't just hop on down to the 7-Eleven, pick up a two liter and an ounce of chronic. You had to know a motherfucker. And Jen, that was probably a motherfucker you didn't want to know, all right? When I first moved to Vegas, I had to get my weed from a dude who lived in the north side of town, all right? North Las Vegas, 11 o'clock at night, e equal chance for you to get stoned or get shot. One of the two. <laughs> and I hated my weed we got. You know, he liked, I like weed, but he was one of the guys who loved weed. You know the type, right? The guys, you know, you go, you have to sit through a power presentation between Indica and Sativa doing Amazon reviews of bongs, edible taste tests. I'm like, dude, I just want to go home, get high, and watch SpongeBob, okay? You were really killing my buzz. All right. My name is Tony. You've been great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harvey. Yeah. Harvey Starter, everybody, from Vegas. All right. We're going to keep it going with your next contestant. Ralph Anthony from New York, New York. How are we doing, hey. Ralph? I'm all right. How about yourself? Yeah. Doing good. Uh, doing I'm good. Doing good. Listen, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I uh, I am in New York. This is ground zero for Corona. This is Corona Camp uh, 2020. It's fantastic. Going outside, it freaks me out because I don't know if people are just covering up because of the corona or if they're trying to rob somebody else. Like, it's <laughs> very frightening up here. Uh, I'm a big dude, and it's just like, it blows my mind how ridiculous we've gotten with all these masks. When corona first hit, they said, listen, you can't go outside. If you go outside, you need an N95 mask. That's what you need, an N95 mask. Can't have anything else. A week later, they said, hey, listen, you know, if you can't get an N95 mask, get a painter's mask. You sure? There's a painter's mask. You can get one of those, a little plumber's mask. You'd be fine. <laughs> a week later after that, they said, listen, you don't have any kind of mask. Listen, you could make your own. Just grab a T-shirt. Just grab a T-shirt. You'll be fine. Take your T-shirt. Take a sleeve. Get some scissors. Make it, like a, make it like an arts and crafts project. Just have fun with it. Make it your own personal style. Do what you want to do. Like, next week, if I turned on the news and they said, listen, just grab a maxi pad and some pantyhose and duct tape. <laughs> listen, I can't take this. I can't fucking take this. Like, I don't I don't know what to do. Like, it, it blowing, it's blowing my mind. And social media doesn't help. Like, it doesn't help one bit. I hate going on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm tired of hearing about people complain about this quarantine. They think they have it so rough. All right, listen, if, if you think... If you think your stay, if you think your quarantine is bad, try being a couple that just broke up but couldn't move out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all set. 
I'm all set. Like, I couldn't do it. If you can, you're a better person than I am. Me, I'd be like, listen, fuck you. I'm out of here. I'd rather get corona. I'd rather get corona than stay in this apartment with you for five more seconds. Like, we're all set. <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of relationships, I actually haven't had sex in, like, two months. Mm-hmm. I haven't had sex in two months because of this, because of corona. Um, and most people think that that's, like, a real bad thing. But I'm real thankful because it's prepped me for... For actually when I get married, so um, <laughs> I'm real excited about that. <clears throat> uh, I, I live alone now. I had roommates, they, they left, so now it's just me, so I, I, I live alone, and most people think that it's real terrible, it's really hard to, to self-isolate, you know, to, to self-isolate by yourself, and I'm an only child. I, I've been prepping for self-isolation my entire life, like, we'll be good. <laughs> I'm all set. <laughs> like you can't win. It's like one. You know, it's like on a seesaw. Like it's either you're self isolating, you're outside, and you're social distancing, and that's what everybody's trying to do. That everybody wants to self distance or, uh, or uh, social distance. You know, and I'm a bit eighties baby, so we we're the pros at self social at social distancing. <laughs> Except back in the eighties, we just called it playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Uh, the bright side to this pandemic, because there's always a silver lining. The bright side is uh, this is the longest time in history where a, pre- a Catholic priest hasn't touched a child. So oh. thumbs up, a <laughs> okay, Corona. That's fantastic. One of my favorite things to do, quarantine or no quarantine, is smoke weed. I love smoking weed. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, I grew up in a very pro weed household, so it blows my mind how people say, you know. Weed is a gateway drug. Smoking weed leads to harder drugs. Like, that's nonsense. Saying that smoking weed leads to harder drugs is like saying making out leads to anal. (laughs) (laughs) I don't understand. Like, (laughs) if anything, smoking weed leads to diabetes. You know, like no one's getting high and going to no one's getting high and going to Whole Foods to get a to get a fruit salad. No, we're going to our bodega to see if we can talk to Mohammed about stuffing a Twix and a Twix and a Twinkie and then rolling it in jelly beans. Like that's what we want to do. I love drugs, man, but it's hard. It's hard to have sex on drugs. You know, like when I smoke weed and try to have sex, I get hungry. When I do coke and try to have sex, I can't get it up. But the hardest drug to have sex on is mushrooms because my dick keeps floating away. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Enjoy your night. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ralph Anthony, everybody. All right. We're going to take a quick break to see a little short that our house improv troupe did in light of the coronavirus So please enjoy the TP showdown. All right, well, for for some reason, the TP Showdown doesn't want to play right now. So forget about that for a minute, and we'll just keep the show going. We're going to go to our next contestant. He is a local for Shenanigans Comedy Theater here in Huntsville, Alabama. We are going to bring up, there it is, my friend Carl Paul. How you doing, Carl Paul? Wonderful. <clears throat> Wonderful. Howard. I'm doing great considering I'm stuck inside. But besides I that, do you have any questions before we get you started? I don't. Thank you. All right, Carl Paul, your five minutes starts now. Well, happy apocalypse, everyone. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a lot better than a lot of you guys probably are considering I'm already like in the country. I live in Alabama. Uh, 
Yeah, I grew up here. I uh, I grew up going to church, you know, Southern Baptist Church. And I got to tell you guys, I've never gotten more action in my life than in church youth group. <laughs> if you don't understand uh, what that's all about, I'll explain. Um, the boys and girls get there about an hour early. Bare minimum, you're getting a hand job or finger banged. And then when they start playing the music... Then everybody just tells God they're sorry, and they still get to go to heaven. <laughs> Pretty sweet deal, right? I don't know. I don't know if you guys ever like went to a youth group, or if they had that kind of stuff where y'all are from. But there's this youth conference, and it's like hundreds and hundreds of youth groups get together, and they're just like, okay. We all agree there's this dude and he made the universe and everything that exists, but also he's super impressed by our dance moves. <laughs> and then we're just like, all right, here we go. We're going to load up a bus or a van with all these hormonal teenagers and hit the road. Hope nobody gets pregnant. <laughs> and then you get there and it's like, I, I was just, I always felt awkward about all the dancing, but like everybody's doing all this spiritual dancing i felt like i wanted to like be a part of it so i looked around what everybody else is doing some people are like closing their eyes swaying back and forth some people got like t-rex hands like this and i was like that's not this high so i feel comfortable with some t-rex hands and i could like close my eyes and sway back and forth so i'm doing that and i'm just feeling like God probably thinks I'm the shit right now. <laughs> and I'm just playing back and forth. And unbeknownst to me, the dude in front of me was doing the same exact thing, but he was like out of sync with me. So he was like going forward as I was going back. But then he was coming back as I was going forward. And I had my T-Rex hands out, right? So he comes back and my hands perfectly cup his ass cheeks. <laughs> for some reason, it's just like... There was like a button, and I just accidentally squeezed, right? <laughs> and turning around, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know how to speak in tongues, but I'm sure he's about to see me in the spirit. And he turns around, and to my surprise, he just smiles and winks at me. And I just felt this <laughs> sigh of relief, but I was like, wait, I thought as Christians we were supposed to hate the gays, but you seem like a nice guy. Like, I think, like, Christians are gay, too. Like, there's gay people everywhere. Like, like when in church, I, I knew a guy, he, said he used to be gay. And I, it, it was so weird. Like, like he would be like, all right, we're, we're, we're having this, this pool party. All the girls got to wear one piece. But all you boys got to wear two piece. You boys better not be getting too sexy out here. You know, I'm trying not to be gay. It's just like, dude, I think you can, like, just be gay. You don't have to also be a pedophile. Like, you don't got to touch these kids if you don't want to, bro. Like, I, I don't know. He's just like, he's just like, yeah, me and God got together. And we were like, get out of here, devil, with your sexy little gay ass. You can't get me within gay thoughts. But it's like, he got got by those gay thoughts, bro. Like... I always felt bad for him because, like, he was always having to keep his wife pregnant so that no one would think he was gay. And he had a bunch of kids. You know, <laughs> it's like, that must have really sucked for him to have to always be doing that. But, yeah, I don't know. He's, I guess he just thought, like, it meant that you were being attacked by the devil. I just thought it meant you had nicer clothes than me. I don't know. <laughs> no no one explained to me like what being gay was and what being homosexual was. So I was just thinking gay thoughts like, man, all these gay boys is getting all the pussy around here <laughs> over there. Like Senator's nephews. I got to try to get more gay, maybe trim my fingernails more off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you. All right, Carl, Paul, everybody. <laughs> Oh, man, there's just something that cracks me up about that dude. All right, so before we move on to our next comic, I just wanted to remind you that we are accepting donations tonight. So if you're having a good time, 
please throw a couple of bucks our way, even if it's just a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten bucks, as if you were coming to a show, we would really appreciate your help. And all that being said, we're going to go to our next contestant, Mr. Ethan Feldman from Brooklyn, New York. How you doing, Ethan? Good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Do you have any questions before we start? Nope. All right, then. Ethan, your five minutes starts now. Um, thanks for having me. It's really good to be here. It's good to do comedy, even in quarantine. Uh, so you guys a little personal story. Uh, I had to go to the doctors recently to give them a semen sample, <laughs> which, was, which was really weird. So a backstory. My wife and I have been trying to have kids. She wasn't getting pregnant, and she was saying it was my fault, like I was the problem. So I went to the doctors to make sure they're not, for a lack of a better term, shooting blanks. And uh, everything checked out. I could tell virtually that you're all super worried about me. <laughs> I semen was fine. So, yeah, I really got to rub that in my wife's face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, actually surprised it was fine. Because when I was growing up, my brother used to punch me in the balls, like, every day. <laughs> But it was a crazy experience. I went into this doctor's office. They put me in like a room with a chair. There was a little coffee table that had like Hustler magazines like fanned out like really nicely. I tried to look at one, but I couldn't get the pages apart for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. But, but the craziest thing to me was that in the corner of the room, I wish I was making this up, was an old tube television. But it gets better than that. It had a VCR connected to it. And it just had a tape looping porn. Like... That old school, they are so behind the times. Like, if I was running that place, I would be like, uh, use your phone? Go <laughs> wild. <laughs> Is there somebody that comes in and, like, rewinds the tape after every session? <laughs> and and uh, I wanted to give the place, like, a good sized sample. So I was in the room for probably, like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. At one point, someone knocked on the door, and they were like, Mr. Feldman, is everything okay in there? And I was like, uh, yeah, you're messing up my flow now, okay? It's, it's going to take longer now, all right? <laughs> and, I, and honestly, I, I, I didn't use any of the pornography that they gave me, because I don't need pornography to masturbate to. No, for me, as a straight man, the best pornography is saved in the cloud, and the cloud is my imagination. I might alienate myself by saying this, but for straight guys... Um, when we masturbate, we just like to think about, uh, I don't know, every girl we've ever met, ever. <laughs> this is true. Straight guys are disgusting people, man. We have a spank bank that goes back for years. <laughs> this is true. I still think about my third grade teacher sometimes, okay? <laughs> I mean, I, I was homeschooled, but... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. No, I'm just... My mom is not watching. She is not here. She's here. <laughs> but I was I was actually explaining this whole like phenomenon to my wife and she was pretty grossed out, not gonna lie, but then she got kinda curious. She was like, Oh, so Ethan, you ever you ever think about me when you masturbate? And I was like, No. <laughs> You're my wife. That's sick. <laughs> Maybe if we got divorced, you know, you'd go back into the rotation. <laughs> That messed up my wife likes that joke. Uh, she actually couldn't believe it. She was like, you really don't think about me? And I was like, no, if anything, I think about you to help me uh, last longer. <laughs> oh. Oh. And don't be like, offended by that. No, my wife like hates all of my material except for that joke, so I feel like it's okay to laugh at that. But uh, guys, it actually, it actually worked. Not only did my wife uh, get pregnant, but she actually gave birth. Yeah, I'm a father now, which Congrats. is yeah. nice. Thank you. And my wife is putting our kid to bed right now, and I'm doing a virtual comedy. So clearly, I'm the best father. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm excited about having being a dad, though, because my wife's uh, Chinese, and I'm Jewish. Surprise! <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I realize our kid's going to be 50% Chinese, 50% Jewish, and 100% the ultimate student. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Or just like cheap and whiny with a really tiny penis. <laughs> uh, don't you love it? It's self-deprecating racist and anti-Semitic all at the same time. No, I'm, uh, I'm just kidding. It's a girl. <laughs> um, I had a bit of... Uh, actually, I went, to, uh, I went to WrestleMania because I'm cool. 
And uh, I'm a pretty, like, observant guy. Like, I pay attention to what's going on around me at all times. Like, I saw the guy in front of me. He was on his phone talking to a girl on Tinder. Like, I saw their whole conversation. He was like, hey, what are you up to tonight? She was like, oh, nothing much. Me and my friends are out for a friend's birthday. What about you? He goes, I'm at WrestleMania. And then she unmatched him. No <laughs> joke. I actually saw the conversation just disappear from the app on his phone. And that's a rookie mistake, guys. You can't tell a girl on Tinder that you're into pro wrestling. If I had told my wife that I liked pro wrestling when we first started dating, she would have unmatched me. Because we actually met on Tinder. This is true. We started dating, got married, had a baby. We had a Tinder baby. Okay? All right, guys. That's your time, about- Ethan. All right, thanks. Thank you so much. Sweet. Ethan Feldman, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we have one more comic before you get to be judgmental AF. And I believe, let's see, this would be Jordan Freeman from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. How you doing, Jordan? I'm well. How are you? Well as well. Thank you so much for being here. Do you have any questions before we start you out? I don't, but thank you for having me. This is what's been keeping me sane for the last couple of days. Well, glad to be a part of that. All right, Jordan, your five <laughs> minutes start now. All right. So one of the things the pandemic has done is made me realize what I dislike about being in a relationship, which is that if one of you gets sick, the other one's definitely going to get sick. The problem with my relationship is if I get sick, my boyfriend gets exponentially sicker. <laughs> so, like, if I have a cough, He'll get the flu. If I get the flu, I mean, if he gets the flu, then I'll get AIDS. That's just how our relationship happens. <laughs> yeah, he's a smoker, so that means I'll get lung cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, of course, because the coronavirus has been ravaging America, the evangelical group has been up in arms blaming the gays. <laughs> for the pandemic happening. And favorite is always the televangelist who's going to be like, the vile and the disgusting. It's all some fat old southern guys. It's like, the vile and disgusting have beseeched the earth, and this is God's wrath. And I'm offended. And someone was, well, when I said I was offended, someone was like, for being vile and disgusting or being gay? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Favorite one that any televangelist has ever said was the reason that something happened, I believe it was Hurricane Sandy, was they said that the gays could control the weather. (laughs) Um, I'm sorry, I must have not accepted, I must not have gotten my acceptance letter to Glad School of uh, Bitchcraft and Faggotry. (laughs) <laughs> but I didn't get any power. <laughs> if I did, it would perpetually be fall. <laughs> so this next joke, um, if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, tune me out, because I'm going to do with some spoilers. So when that movie came out, Disney did this PR um, push about how it was going to introduce the first gay character. Which made me think, Stephen Buck, you're about to fuck. (laughs) And I was super excited. So I went to the movie theater, I got my popcorn, I sat down, and I started watching Avengers. One hour passed. Second hour passed. Third hour passed. And then credits. So the gay character Disney was so proud about was a minor character it was a gay character it was a gay guy in one of those after the snap group therapy sessions really Disney (laughs) I've been watching all three Captain America movies being cock teased with the Steve and Buck relationship expecting Captain America to give his justice to the Winter Soldier and the gay character in your movie is some sad faggot. <laughs> when I got to the credits, he was credited as fag number two. Like, who the fuck was fag number one? Did I miss <laughs> something in the movie? Uh, and then they did the same thing again in Star Wars. 
they promised the gay character in Star Wars, and I thought it was going to be Ray. So I fell for the joke again because in Star Wars it was a lesbian couple who kiss, and literally this is what the scene was like: kiss, one beat, two beat, camera moves. I was like, cool. So I got two seconds of gay. I'm not touching <laughs> you again. You've broken my heart. <laughs> All right. This is my last joke, and I'll um, be finished. And it's a uh, question and answer. So how, and it's perfect for Easter, too. So it's how <laughs> am I and Jesus similar? Huh. We both have absentee fathers, and we both like to get nailed by Italians. <laughs> That's not, thank you. All right, thank you, Jordan. Jordan Freeman, everybody. Okay, now it is time for you to get judgmental. We're about to turn on the voting. You will have five minutes to cast your vote, and you must vote for two comics. If you don't vote for two, your vote won't count. That's how we do it to try to make it super fair around here. So please cast your vote now for your favorite two comics. And also remember that number two was a scratch as well. So you got one, three, four, six, seven, and eight. And their names are on the form where you vote. So you can either go to that tiny URL, you can scan it if you're looking at something other than your phone or you can click the link in the description of this video. <coughs> Excuse me. I do not have the Rona, by the way. That's just dry throat, because I'm sitting here talking. So, as you can see, there's a countdown timer right above the QR code. I'm gonna see if my music will play. problem is the music so we'll just sit here in silence everybody do we do acapella like <laughs> that's <laughs> Hey, 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 comics, um, for whatever reason, I can't mute you, and so they're hearing your conversations, which is fine. If you want to entertain them, just wanted to let you know that. Okay. <laughs> I love it. You have three cats and a dog? Mm hmm Wow. None of them are actually mine. I became like the stepfather to three cats and a dog. 
You have four bastard children. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, I bet you those cats. I feel like those three cats beat the shit out of that dog when you're not around. Oh, one of them despises the dog. Will actively hiss and go at her all the time. The other two are just like, "Oh, you're here. Okay, cool." What do they call domestic abuse between household pets? Domestic abuse. <laughs> 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 it's so funny because you're not high right now and I'm so high <laughs> <laughs> I don't look high but I'm not I, I stayed up till like 3am last night working on a programming project that's why I'm like I'm so tired looking yeah yeah oh my god Florida <laughs> Jesus I mean, it's better. I mean, it's safer here. Like, our, the town has, like, 57 confirmed cases out of, like, 30,000 people in the town. So it's definitely, like, not as crazy. I mean, Florida has shelter in place, though, in, in the whole state. Right. There are 30,000 people in your town. In this and town. There, and, and there are 6,000 cases in it. No, there's 30,000 people, and there's 57 confirmed cases. Oh, no, seven, not six thousand. Yeah, I was like, dude, that's like fucking twenty five percent. Like, that's not good. <laughs> no, only fifty seven. So it's not that bad. I just, but I don't know. I've just been working like I like my whole company went remote. So it's just. Yeah. Sorry to everybody else on this to have to hear this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I'm losing it's votes because of this conversation. They were like, he was funny until he started talking while we were trying to vote. <laughs> it might be helping you, man. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, phenomenal. And it's wide. It's open. I'd, I'd rather be here than, than in Manhattan. I'm glad. This is the first time where I was happy that I moved. I was, it only took nine months. <laughs> yeah, because of the monster video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, voting has concluded. And our two finalists are everybody that can make a drum roll. Finalists are Ralph Anthony and Carl Paul. Ralph Anthony and Carl Paul. So in just a moment, I'm going to go to Ralph Anthony first. We'll just kind of go in the order that you guys appeared. And for when I come to you, Ralph Anthony, you're going to have three minutes. I'll give you light at two and a half. Then the same thing for Carl Paul. So let me pull up Ralph Anthony. As soon as my computer acts right, of course it's not at the moment, got the spinning ball of death, you know how it goes. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right, so here we go. Ralph Anthony, there you are. Are you good? You... Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Your three minutes start now. Cool, thank you. Um, so what's nice is you guys have had a small little snapshot. You've gotten to know me. Um, so I feel like I can open up and just kind of be honest with you guys uh i don't like people <laughs> i don't like people do you no fuck no people are terrible man we are the worst and if you don't if you don't agree with me you're only lying to yourself because we all have that same moment where we come home from a hard day getting dry humped by the outside world we walk into our apartment shut our door lean back and go god i hate people <laughs> Yeah. But when you're a white guy in Trump's America doing a virtual comedy contest and you say you don't like people, everyone gets real concerned. <laughs> <laughs> There's not big groups of people. It's small groups of people. It's pockets of people. It's people you come across every single day. People that just grate on your fucking nerves, man. People that I like to call annoying assholes, or AA for short. <laughs> you, ever, you ever meet someone for the first time and as soon as you say their name, they immediately have to correct you on how to pronounce it? Usually happens with girls named Andrea. You're like, hey, what's up, Andrea? It's so nice to meet you. Uh, excuse me, it's Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
I, I am so sorry. Can you tell me again how you spell that? That's right. C U N T. I don't like people that feel the need to add in sound effects when they give you a fist bump. It's usually a common problem with white guys. It's like, uh, uh, bring it in, bring it in. Ready? Ready? <laughs> How awkward is that? It's at that moment where everyone in the room wishes it was a real bomb and we were all dead. <laughs> I don't like girls that sexed and have poor spelling. <laughs> I don't like girls that sexed and have poor spelling. Like, in this day and age of Siri and autocorrect, you can't take five more seconds to figure out what you're trying to tell me. Here we're having this hot, spicy, sexy moment, and then you throw out, you want to suck on my dock? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are we all a fucking sailing lady? <laughs> what? Oh, you can't wait to get me home so I can come on your tots? <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, I'm all for bringing food to bed, but I don't think tater tots are that sexy. Then I got to follow it up and ask her, well, does she want them heated up or frozen? Because those are two entirely different fetishes. <laughs> I don't like people that say they're food addicts. Like, I, I, don't, I don't like people that say they're food addicts. Like, you, no one's addicted to food. That's just called hunger. Like, an addict is someone that will do sexual favors in order to get their fix. I've never seen somebody at 3 a.m. in the East Village say, I'll suck your dick for some Skittles. <laughs> All right, that's <laughs> his time. I just want to taste the rainbow. <laughs> Give Thank it up for so Ralph much. Anthony. Sweet. Thank you. All right, Carl Paul. You ready, buddy? Yeah. Your three minutes start now. So I'm an essential worker, uh, so I still have to like go in the city and be around people. I am a welder. I don't know if anyone listening is a welder, but I bet if I asked you if you thought it was cool, you would say yeah, to which I would say, well, sir, ma'am, have you ever burned your genitals before? <laughs> Uh, on my first welding job, I was welding over my head, stick welding, which causes a lot of sparks. A spark flew down like an asteroid through my denim uh, uh, jeans and hit my underwear, which has synthetic fibers in it, exploded and melted and all over the skin. To give you an example of what this might be like, if you saw a hornet's nest and you were to stomp on that hornet's nest, and whip out your junk and teabag the opening of that horn. <laughs> that might give you an idea of what that feels like. So I was just like, I don't care who's around. I just was like ripping up stuff, hurrying up down there. I looked like I was jerking off so hard that smoke was coming out of my dick. And I was just like... <laughs> I really hope this works out and I don't become a registered sex offender today. <laughs> I had to go to first aid and I was like, I tore my pants up. I was just trying to play it cool. I was like covering myself. I was like, do you need to see or not? Like, just tell me, Do am I supposed to show you? Please don't call the police. <laughs> like, this is what you do. There's no safety meeting for what you do when you burn your ball sack. <laughs> a calculate for that kind of bullshit ever happening. So what they had did, they give they gave me a handful of burn cream and sent me to the bathroom. And I'm like, that's exactly what I would have done in your situation. So I just go in there, and I'm just I'm just cupping my nuts like they're a kitten that got stepped on by a pony. I'm just like, I'm so sorry this happened to you, little buddy. Everything will get better. Just keep thinking happy thoughts. I was just walking sideways, not get, not trying to like show anybody anything, any white bumps down there. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Carl Paul, everybody. All right. Now it is time for you to go to the final vote. It's time for you to crown a winner. Let's see. There we go. There's the 
QR code if you're able to scan it. If you're not watching on the same device you're going to vote on. Then there's the URL below that and there's also a link in the description of this post on Facebook. So just scroll up from the video and there's a link there. I think that um, somebody will probably end up popping it into the comments as well. It seemed to happen last time. So we got five minutes to vote and then we will crown our winner for the evening. And again, comics, you're free to talk. Just know they can hear you. That's all I'm saying. Dude, <laughs> what do your balls look like? <laughs> right now, I mean, I think they look normal. I don't look at a lot of balls. But I think, like, do you ever have a girl wonder, like, is this, like, like, yeah? Do they ever wonder if you're on a date, dude? Are they like, does this guy have deformed balls? Like, what's up? Well, like that, I mean, it healed up, but like okay. for a while I was super like, I was like, man, this is going to be hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, your ball sack probably looks like Freddy Krueger, man, like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it did, dude. dude and I was cool. like, I was like walking like this for like a month and like I would... I would like walk normal in front of people and just grit my teeth and as soon as they would turn away I would just start waddling again. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to tell the least amount of people about it as possible because I was super married. <laughs> I you're think that's probably wise. Tell, yeah, and now you're getting paid to tell everyone. <laughs> yeah, well, Dreams do come true. Out, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> our most embarrassing story has become our best, some of our best material. Yeah, I think so. People like to hear about, it makes them feel better about their own life. <laughs> oh, 100%. One, they, feel they're, they feel like they're better than us if, when we tell a horrible story. Yeah. Yeah. 100%, dude. 100%. Turning yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Who's on the bottom right over here? Who is that? <laughs> that sounds like this some kind of thing. Abbott and Costello who's on bottom. Right? <laughs> Kim, thank you again for putting this together. Oh, man, my thank pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. On. Of course, of course. If you guys have any comedy friends that would like to compete, we are still going to be running the contest for basically as long as we're shut up three times a week eight people a, a thing um i'm currently booked for about the next week and a half luckily but it i'm leaving signups open and i'm just kind of booking them as a first come first serve kind of deal so if you guys know any comics that are interested please refer them our way far out yeah will do do you do the booking for the theater? Like one, one if if and when we get back to normal, do you b do bookings for the theater as well? I do. Oh, very cool. If it, if it's cool, can I stay in touch with you, please? Yeah, of course. Any of you guys, you guys are all great. So if you're ever in the Huntsville area, hit me up. We'll see what we can do. And even if Shenanigans doesn't have something going on, we have a really uh, you know amenable comedy community around here. And some great guys that run some other independent shows besides. So just about any day of the week, we can find something for you to do, even if it's headlining an open mic. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah. Any of you New York people run into a guy named Gio Perez? The name sounds super familiar. Yeah, right? Yeah, he, yeah I think he lives in Brooklyn now. He um, came. He lived down here for a little while, and now he came up there. He's uh, he's got some real long curly uh, hair, glasses, goatee. Anyways, okay. super nice guy. If you see him, say hi to me. Say hi for me, not to me. Wouldn't do any good to see Gio and say hi, Kim. <laughs> uh, Are you Facebook stalking him right now? Yeah. yeah. Wait, can you see my fucking screen? But you were you were like this, so I. <laughs> it <looks> like... <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm shoot, I'm so high right now. If I don't look at look for it, I'm gonna forget. <laughs> That's my mindset. Man. If you tell me something, and I'm high. I'm like, I gotta do it right away. Like I gotta do it right away. I'll That's the what, best I mean... way to stay put. You don't want to do anything, but just like sit down. I was about to say, if I did, if I wasn't a teacher, this would be the perfect time to smoke weed. You know, like, yeah. why not? But, mm -hmm. However, yeah. that whole job thing and 
it being illegal. <laughs> oh yeah, it's illegal down there, huh? Yeah. Yep, still illegal That's down that. here. We barely got CBD legal within the last six months to a year, I think, something like that. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, it's so. illegal, but a lot of people don't really care. They're just like, "Don't tell me that you did it." <laughs> it. It's the "don't ask, don't tell" of our generation. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> they actually have a truck in New York that sells CBD candy. Ralph, have you seen that? The Weed World truck. Yeah, that thing's a fucking scam, dude. It's not even real weed. No, it's CB. It's CBD based. <laughs> People come there and they're like, yo, it's legal. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It, I always laugh when I see tourists and shit posted up. Like, yeah. No, it's totally a scam, but I think, yeah, I think it's funny, too. I always see people going there like, yo, man, I got all these candies. <laughs> yeah, like, all right. No weed. Well, you were, well, in Vegas. Oh. I, Sorry, that's all right. I have a winner if anybody's curious because the five minutes has passed. The voting has concluded. But before I announce the winner, I would like to say that these lovely shenanigans t-shirts would go to help support us if you are interested in buying one. There is a link also in the notes or in the description of this video, shenaniganshsv.square.site. Be sure we'd love to send you a t-shirt. So, with all that being said, let's go back to, well, it's not letting me get off the t-shirt yet, so I guess we'll have to just look at this lovely shenanigans shirt until the ball quits spinning. You know what, I appreciate you guys being patient with me. This is a learning process, of course, and hopefully I've figured some things out, won't have as many glitches next time. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, so everybody do the best drum roll you can do. And congratulate our winner for the night, Carl Paul, everybody. Carl Paul is our winner. <laughs> That's my, my wife hoo-hooing in the background over there. Carl Paul, <laughs> do you have any... Think well. I was. I'm gonna switch to you, and it'll let me. So be ready. You're about to be on camera, Carl. Okay. All when right. It, when it lets me, I didn't. You know, want you talking to your little buddy or anything when I switch the camera over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you are, Carl Paul. You got anything to say? You were just voted the winner of this first virtual show. Uh, I don't know who any of you are, but thanks for voting <laughs> for me. I'm glad you had a good time. I'm glad we can like do something and still have fun with each other even though we can't see each other and I'm just so happy to meet all of these hilarious other comedians from all over the place. Don't get to do that that often. I know, so. man. That's that's been my favorite part of this whole thing. Like you guys are hilarious and I, I love getting exposed to folks. Not literally, don't expose me. But um <laughs> I I like having this opportunity to get to know you guys. All right, yeah. anybody have any parting words before we sign off? Uh, thank you. That was great meeting you guys. Likewise. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for being part of it. Again, spread the word. Those of you who are watching, if you are able to throw a couple of bucks our way, we sure would appreciate it. And thank you to the generous person. Do you think he would care if I said his name? Jessica? You think our the donor would care if we said his name? Oh, All right, Brian Davis, thank you so much for your donation. He kicked in the money to cover the winner tonight, so we appreciate you, Brian. Again, thank you, Brian. Yeah, Thanks. he's a solid dude, good friend. Good work, Brian. He's a welder. <laughs> Is he a welder? Yeah. Oh, and he's a welder, Carl Paul. So oh, there you go. yeah, dirty hands, clean money, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> dirty hands, clean money. I wonder if Brian's ever burned his little buddy. I'm not going to ask him because he'll tell me, and he might even show me. I hope me. he has. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not going to do that. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Hey, guys, tune in Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central Time, for the second version of Clash of the Comics Quarantine Edition. And with that, we're going to sign off here from Shenanigans Comedy Theater in Huntsville, Alabama. Thanks, guys. Have a fan. Thanks. Good Thanks. Night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. I can't Good night. sign off until the ball stops spinning, so I'm just going to wave at you until it quits and lets me finish. So there's that. You just get to see me like a bobblehead right now.
That's he good. Ha- he said he feels Carl's pain. Good night. <laughs> Brian said he feels your pain, Carl Paul. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.